A minimal API is one thing, but how would you now inject a data context of entity framework so you can actually use your database? After this little tutorial, you know how to do this. So I've got this minimal API here. If you want to know how to do this thing, please check out the info card. I did this already in another video. And now I want to move these books here to a database, right? And for that first, we need entity framework here. And well, there is some boilerplate stuff we have to do. First, we have to install some NuGet packages and then add our data context and then use code first migration. If you already know how to do this, check out the time codes or the chapters below and then you can just move on with the minimal API. But now first, let's do the entity framework stuff. So right click this project and manage NuGet packages. And there are actually three packages we need here. Make sure to click on the browse tab. I do this wrong all the time. And then I'm wondering why I don't find these packages here. The reason is because I'm here on the install tab. Well, browse tab nowadays, Entity Framework Core SQL Server. This is exactly the one I need because I want to use the SQL Server Express here for this example. I accept. Then we also need design. So install this thing, accept. And this should be it already. Additionally, make sure to install the EF core tools. This can be done in the package manager console, for instance, and you enter .NET tool install dash dash global .NET EF. And here you can see I've already got it installed. But what I can do is I can actually uh, write uninstall and then reinstall this thing again, or I just update this. And this would then work like that update and with that now I get version 7.0.1 isn't that great and I can now double check .NET EF and here it is command line tools for entity framework core 7 now with version 7.0.1 all right with that now this is done it is installed and now let's add a data context I just added right here in the root folder of the project we add a new class and now I call this data context and this inherits from db context and with control period we are using microsoft entity framework core maybe we need this on another place and uh, with global now we can or we have it available everywhere and now in here again boilerplate stuff we need a constructor just enter ctor and then hit tab twice data context it is with the parameter db context options and our type is now the data context so our class here let's just call this options and we also need the base constructor here like that and then we need a connection string there are several ways to do this we could add it for instance here in the app settings json file or we just use our on configuring method so override it is on configuring there it is and in here now we use the options builder to use sql server and in here now we add our connection string in my case i'm using sql server express so this means i can add something like that if sql server express is installed on the same machine as you are currently developing so let's just use it like that then we give this thing a name a database name and uh, well this is our book club so minimal book db for instance for the database name then we set trusted connection to true and now with dotnet 7 we also have to add one more thing trust server certificates also true all right so our server sql express on localhost databases minimal book db trusted connection set to true and also trust server certificate also true and now the last thing since i've got the the book entity here this class let's make this public and uh, with that now we have to add a db set because with this db set then this will be available in the database as a table so this is a property in essence db set this is a book and let's call this books and what we can also do is we already initialize this as a set of books all right and with that there's only one step left so in our program cs now 
we have to register our database context and we can do this up here with builder services and then add db context and then we choose our data context here and that should be it and here now we need the proper using directive and now we can make use of code first migration well to add our database actually. So that'll be .NET EF migrations at initial, for instance, build started and hopefully it succeeds. Yes, it does. And we are done. Great. Let's have a quick look here. We've got a new folder, the migrations folder. And in here now we see in the app method, a books table will be created with the primary key and an automatic ID field. So it auto increases, awesome. And down method, so if you would roll back this migration, it would just remove the table here. So let's create our database now with .NET EF database update. I know update might be a bit confusing, but it also works if the database does not exist. And here, well, there is something missing. Keyword not supposed to trust. Okay, let's have a look again. Tr yeah, all right, trust server certificate. Let's try this one more time. This looks better. So now we see all the uh, SQL statements, create table and so on. And now in the SQL Server Management Studio, let's just refresh this thing. We can see this is from my other .NET Jumpstart course, but here's our minimal book database with the books table. Awesome. All right, and now let's move on with the actual minimal API. Back to Visual Studio and now in our program CS. This is now really crazy actually. We of course do not need this list anymore. Let's try this first with our books list. So the first get call just return all the books. And what we can do here now is in these parentheses, we can already inject the data context. And this looks like that. We just enter data context, context, and now we can uh, just access this thing. So here we say context, books, everything is available. To list async, for instance, for that we also have to add the async keyword up here. Async it is, and that's now also await. Of course, that's it. That's it already. We could even remove the curly braces here and also the return keyword. And this is now, well, really minimalistic, I would say. So this is how to get all the books. And I would say we save this and test this. And uh, what do we expect? Well, actually no books at all because in the database table, we haven't entered anything and that's absolutely correct. So let's change that real quick. Maybe we can add the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. We just um, added 200, top 200 rows. Add the title, Douglas Adams is the author. And now the great thing is we do not have to restart the app or anything. We just hit execute one more time and there is our beautiful book. Isn't that great? Now let me add the other ones and just cut to the result. Here we are. So now we've got four books. And again, when we just run this, we get all the books from the database now. So this is great. Next would be now getting a single book with a certain ID. Now let me just first remove these books here. So we will really, really make sure that we get all the data from the database. And let's just uncomment this stuff here because we need the code in a couple of minutes. So let's save this. I know here are build errors, of course, now because we have no books here. Now, actually, what we can do is we just, well, try to find the books from the database, right? But if you want to do this really minimalistic, let's say, we can do it a bit differently here as well. So let's just say await async keyword has been added automatically. This is great. And before we can access the context, we of course have to inject it again. So data context, context it is. And now await context books. Now we can use find async with the given ID. That's great. And now if we got a book, so let's check this with is book book. Crazy, huh? and then use the ternary operator. So if we got an actual book, we say results, okay, 
book. And if we did not find the book, we say results not found. Sorry, book not found, for instance. All right, let's test this. We run this one more time. There we are. So all the other calls are gone. Again, we can double check here are all the books from the database. And if we now say we want to get the book with ID one, that's that. And what about ID zero, for instance? Sorry, book not found. Great. Okay, so next now adding a new book. So with that, we again inject the data context at the book to the books table. And then the important difference actually, well, we have to call save changes async. Maybe you already know that. So first start with data context, context. And here now we say context books, and then add our new book not we do not need the add async method here sometimes I get asked this question this is actually as it says here this method is async only to allow special value generators such as the one used by sequence high low and so on and so on for all other use cases the non async method should be used so in our case we, we do not need this one we can totally use the add method similar to the update method right there is no update async as you can see here we just need the add method because then entity framework tracks the change in memory and only when we now call await context save changes async this uh, this change actually this new book is written and stored to the database so add is totally sufficient here no need for the add async and in the end, what we want to do is we want to return results. Okay. But then um, wait and actually get all the books. So context books to list async. It is. All right. Let's save that and test this again. There's our post call. And yeah, I'm really lazy here. I just hit execute string string great book and there it is with id5 again double check here we've got five books now and also in the database there's our book number five great and now put again we need our data context so let's inject this thing like that we add our async keyword here and we try to find context actually await context books find async and here only the given id if it is null again we return uh, not found but otherwise we well we overwrite title and author and then we can call await context save changes async and in the end again we just uh, copy and paste this here to return all our books. Save that and restart the app manually. And let me first get a reference here. For instance, this one. And now put, try this out. ID was three. And this is now ready player two. We hit execute and there's the result ready player two by Ernest Klein and then the database pay attention ready player two. Awesome. Now only delete is left. I think you know the drill by now. So in here again, we add our data context context. We want to get wait context books find async the proper book and here now we say context books remove book and we save all the changes with save change async and in the end again we just return all the books reset the application and since i don't really like the book with the id5 let's just remove this one so hit execute these are the only books left and the same thing here. 
Awesome. And now if you want to know more about web APIs, entity framework, relationships, and so on, then maybe you should have a look at this video here on the screen.